Okay, this is lesson 2.4. We're looking at opposites, which is basically your positives and your negatives and your corresponding distance from zero. So there's some properties we want to look at, and that's what the big idea here is. Basically, a negative times a negative gives you a positive. We know that. And anything times negative 1 gives you the negative answer or the opposite answer. So a negative times a negative gives you the opposite, a positive. A negative times a positive in any order gives you the opposite, which is a negative. So we already know that. And so we're going to look at this basically following our distributive property and how does this play into all the rules we've been following so far in Chapter 2 to simplify. So sometimes you're going to see an expression given like this where there's a negative sitting on the outside of parentheses. We're going to treat that as a negative 1 being distributed. But what it's basically asking you for is what is the opposite of 3x plus 7. Well, to find the opposite, you're multiplying by negative 1. So treat this like a negative 1 and multiply. So when I do negative 1 times 3, it's negative 3x. And negative 1 times 7 is negative 7. And that is fully simplified. Those are not like terms. That is done. Problem number 2, it's 4x minus this whole thing. So you could treat it as two separate problems, 4x minus 2x and 4x minus 9. But when we go to simplify this stuff, we want to treat this again like a negative 1. Distribute it, just like if we had a 3 out here. First thing we would do is distribute and then put everything together. So we're just going to treat this like a negative 1, which means the 4x is just going to come down and we're going to multiply. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2x. So at first you look at that and you're like, well, that just dropped down. right? But the problem is, is when you start thinking like that, then you just end up dropping down the plus 9, and that's incorrect because this is a negative 1 times 9. So this becomes a negative 9 when you multiply there. So you've got to be careful about using those words. It just drops down. Negative 1 is distributed. So now we're going to combine like terms, which are the x's. The minus 9 doesn't have anything to combine with. It does not have a like term here. So it's going to stay separate. And 4x minus 2x is just 2x. Okay? The quantity x plus 6 minus the product of 7 and the quantity 2x minus 3. So when I'm going to handle this, I'm going to leave the x plus 6 alone. And I'm going to distribute this as a negative 7. So some people like to think of it as a minus, and then you're multiplying a positive 7. But you really got to be careful with that. I'd much rather you treat this as a negative, multiply, and then whatever you get, whether it's positive or negative, write it as a plus or a minus. That will make your life 10 times easier as we go through this. So I'm going to drop the x plus 6 down. If you want to keep parentheses around it, that's fine. But right now, it doesn't make a difference. So negative 7 times 2 is negative 14x. And now a negative times a negative, we need to see that. A negative times a negative is a positive. So we have to write plus, and that's where the mistakes are going to happen. 21. So pretend this isn't here, and just multiply it like you normally would. Negative 7 times 2, negative 7 times negative 3, positive. Now we've got a number sentence. We've got to combine like terms. Put your x's together and your whole numbers together. So this is a 1x minus 14. That's negative 13x, and a positive 6 and a positive 21 is a positive 27. Okay, a couple more examples, a little more complicated, but same idea, nothing new. This is the, ba the big idea for today. It's basically when I'm subtracting a quantity, I distribute a negative 1. Or if I'm subtracting the product of a number and a quantity, I'm going to distribute the number out here as a negative. Once you've got that, that I'm distributing a negative, You've got this whole section. So what, before I start trying to combine anything, it's this whole quantity minus this whole quantity. What you want to do is you want to distribute the negative 1. So that's going to create a negative 7k squared. And this is a negative times a negative. Okay, very important to catch that. Negative times a negative is a positive 9. It's a 1, so the number itself is does not change. It's just a negative times 7 is negative 7, and negative times negative 9 is positive 9. This whole thing's going to come down, and you don't need the parentheses anymore. It's not incorrect to write them, but you don't need them. And I'm going to combine like terms, which are just my k squareds and my whole numbers. So 3k and a minus 7k, that's a negative 
4k squared. And a positive 4 and a positive 9 is 13. Next problem, I'm distributing a negative 5. I like to circle it to make sure I see the negative. So 3y is just going to hang out for a second. Negative 5 times y is negative 5y, which I write as minus 5y. And again, that's where everybody wants to say, oh, it just drops down. But then if you follow that same mentality, this is the part you mess up. So it's negative 5 times positive 1. So that creates a negative, not a positive, 5. Okay, and then I'm just going to combine like terms, which are my y's. The minus 5 is going to stay. It's a 3y minus 5y. That's a negative 2y. Okay, last but not least, got this crazy looking thing with all of these a's and b's and minuses. But the first thing that I need to take care of is getting rid of these parentheses so I can combine some like terms here. So since I have a minus in front of the parentheses, I need to distribute it to everything, all three terms. So this whole front part is going to stay. I'll bring that down in a second. But I need to focus on distributing the negative. So since there's no numbers here, I don't have to actually multiply anything, but I need to watch my positives and negatives. This is a negative times a positive, so it's negative a squared. This is a negative times a negative, so it's a positive b. And this is a negative times a positive, so that's negative c. Now all of this can come down. And I can start combining like terms. So be very careful with your positives and negatives here. Whatever is in front of your term, the plus or the minus, counts as positive or negative. So this is a positive a squared and a negative a squared. Well, those, if you add them together, it's a 1 and a negative 1 is 0. They're gone. My b's, I have a plus b and a plus b. That's a 1b and a 1b. So that's 2b when I combine it. And now I have a negative c and a negative c. So a negative 1 and a negative 1. That's negative 2c. And I write that as a minus. So the main part of today's lesson is just understanding when I see a minus in front of a quantity or in front of parentheses, I need to distribute it as a negative, whether it has a number or it doesn't. If it doesn't have a number, you treat it like a negative one and you distribute.